alert. Red alert. Red alert. Talibans taking over the government of Nigeria in the guise of Nyeti Allah. Talibans taking over the government of Nigeria in the guise of Nyeti Allah. Another repeated repetition of the Afghanistan case. Nigerians must be on red alert. The MKO Abiola family just confirmed this. MKO Abiola's son, Rabiu, confirms this red alert. They have created the Ministry of Livestock. The Talibans are controlling whatever happens in Nigeria now. They call for creation of Ministry of Livestock. They call the shots. They tell the government what to do. They control the government. They tell the government when not to sack security chiefs. If you follow the news yesterday, my broadcast yesterday, if you did not follow it, go and watch it. Go and watch that from the beginning to the end. You will get the red alert. Whatever happens to Nigeria now going forward is controlled by the Mieti Allah extension of the Taliban in Nigeria. They are in charge, they are here already. Red alert. Everyone must dress up. Everyone, every community must dress up. The world must come to the notice, to the knowledge of what is about to happen. The world must come. Please. You must prepare to save the Nigerian people. And of course, you must come. I am talking to the world now. I am begging you, you two, please help us to make this message go wild. The Talibans, in the guise of Mieti Allah, the notorious terrorist group in Nigeria, they now control. See our newspaper dailies. I put it up here. I have a lot of it. The Mieti Allah now tell Nigeria when to introduce a, any bill the Nigerian introduce. That is why they tell you the government they support. You see here in the screen, they tell you they supported this government to come. The Mieti Allah supporting governments to come, a terrorist group. They are serious about it. They make the claim, they came out open to say they supported Tinubu uh, Buhari to win election. And when Tinubu finally win, see, I am giving you the, these are the headlines, it's in YouTube. Go and watch. Mieti Allah, the terrorist group, the terrorists, the known, the notorious, I think, the second or the third most notorious terrorist group in the world now. They said they supported Tinubu Buhari and Buhari won. Then after Tinubu won, Buhari won, they came up again and said that even their cows are happy. Even their cows are happy that Tinubu or Buhari won. Then again, the Tinubu in the Mumu ticket which they enforced, Mumu, Muslim Muslim ticket which they enforced, is up again. They are saying the same thing, that they are the ones that endorsed Tinubu. Look at it. I, we don't hear, we don't spread rumor. We tell you things the way they are. This is what the Mieti Allah is saying. And they are not hiding it. That was why the uh, Buhari government, Jitas, when they come out, each time they carry out attack, their terror attack, they go to community and wipe uh, the community members, the citizens of that community in thousands. They come up and own it. And you ask them, they say, like I gave it in the, go and watch the yesterday news. They said, they kill their cow. They kill their cattle. So because of this, they are avenging their cow. That is the country we are, and God will not allow us to continue being in this kind of country. So now, look at, look at, just look at it here. See the headlines. Then you can open it on your own in YouTube, because if I begin to play all this video, we will stay five hours here, or ten. I can play all these videos. So go on, search. We endorsed Buhari. He won. Our cows, even our cows are happy that Buhari won. Now we endorse Tinubu, he emerged. He is going to do our will. Tinubu is doing what we want. Now, they told Tinubu now, that is why immediately Tinubu won, they told him, oh, that time to work for us now. We are introducing the, uh, the, the bill. 
we're introducing the the and the bill that was ab aborted, which was fought against by all the, the state governments, the state assemblies. Why did the state assemblies fight against it? Because their real agenda was noticed after they had caused so much mayhem across different societies, different communities in the in the states of the federation. So now this is it. But before we go into uh, this detail, please let us see. Uh, let us start from this angle before we continue, my brothers, my sisters. If this is the first time you are coming across our video, I am Akpan Akpan Asokwa. This is Biafra Radical Freedom TV. Please do good to follow us by subscribing. You can as well click on the notification button like bell, bangam bangam. Click it so that whenever we put up any program, you will be alerted. And as you are listening to us, we also wish to hear your opinion on the comment section. If there is a day you have something also to share with us, you want us to come live, you also notify us. You also notify us because we are open. You can even drop it in the comment section and uh, uh, we will pick it there. We make time, there are people who manage the page, you know. So, and also help us to share this, uh, our programs like this one too share it unless you don't like what we are doing but if you do like it make sure you share it many people need to know what is happening so that one of us will be on the know on a very red alert so that uh, <laughs> nothing will happen or uh, we will not be taken on our ways thank you as we proceed with the pro uh, program in details thank you we go there Lovers of freedom all over the world, I come to you in peace and I have come with greetings from Chukika Biyama to you, still your own very beloved Akban Akban Asoko, the corrosive Biafran presenter, social commentator and analyst. We are not going to take your time today. We are going to continue with that. We have started until that which we are expecting finally comes to fruition. The sovereign state of Biafra. I am going to um, work on certain clips, certain developments again in the Nigerian state. We had the last program, why is a particular state acting in a manner that people will simply say this state can only be linked to sponsorship of terror and thus is qualified to be called a terrorist state. Um, please, YouTube, there is no disinformation in whatever we are doing here, please, this is a disclaimer. Whatever we are doing, we are backing up with Nigerian dailies. It is all going to be given here. We have a lot of dailies to justify whatever we are doing because Freedom Quest fighting for determination is enshrined in the very uh, charter that established the United Nations. So, which if we are talking about democracy, rule of law, and the modern or civil society, it all is built around the modern state as contained in the United Nations Charters. So, today we want to see the particular um, video coming from Yoruba land again. A certain pastor who has been um, controversial, a Yoruba native pastor, or prophet, he has come out clear to join the Abiola family. To join the Abiola family to say that there is no hope, there is no hope for anyone in one Nigeria. Please, YouTube, a disclaimer not me saying we are only working on what the Nigerian people are saying. 
It's not, we are only analyzing. So this pastor, I think you will need to listen to this pastor, then we progress. Thank you. To leave the place. This is the last time when Buho came back to Nigeria. He came to the place. He's more or less a free citizen of that place. And they are very united in that place than Nigeria. How can we be united when at the border, Bruta is there? At the border, all Fulanis are there. Even when you go to the airport there, some did not have a job there in the airport. They were just there every day doing prayer and get salary. Doing prayer and get that salary. Go to all the northern states in a federal quarter. The ghost staff that you are going to see that come from the north mm -hmm. is more than the one in the south. I've been warning Nigerians over 20 years. We should desert their food. Mm -hmm. We should desert their food. Here comes the reckoning now. I didn't be in your yard, but they know what they are doing. They use those cows. Kudo to Ibuhu. Kudo Papa to Baba Kindre. Kudo to all the, all the Yoruba uh, freedom fighters. You know Yoruba has prepared their money. They have prepared their, their, uh, their flag. They have prepared everything. It was last night I dreamt. Even has, even have their own They have their, 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 their flag. So the Igbo, Igbo has his own too. We should go. We should go. We should go. We should go. Because if they would not allow this man to, to reframe or uh, to, to reset all that is bad, uh -huh. So we should go. Mm. They should allow us to go. If we should go, when Tungu is leaving the, uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. he will not be our president too. We will not vote for him again. He should be having a safe landing into us. And they are pursuing them. They wanted to know what is happening with the OL. Mm. And when you look at what Tungu Babuari did in, in uh, NNPC, in the port, everywhere. You know, he, he voiced out to us the other day that he cannot work with any any other tribe than Fulani. Mm. So what's the meaning of that? Is Fulani part of Nigeria? And we're only having three babies from the hospital. When our father, when uh, uh, Lugard gave back to us, he said, Hausa, uh, Ibu, and Yoruba. So how do we come about Fulani again? And look at the open grazing that we have overruled. They push Nubu now to go and say, um, uh, Ministry of uh, Livestock. Which is food, where it's a fluke. We don't want it. Mm. They should go and cancel it. We don't need it. It's fake. Like I do not say that they are born to rule. Because you are the military the ministry of defense is in Kaduna. Navy headquarters is in Kaduna. Soldier headquarters, the ND is in Kaduna. Then the police academy is in Kaduna. So automatically that gave them the upper that if we wanted to drive them away, this is we are going to accrue this one to ourselves. Okay, um, you heard him. The man is simply saying that um, this unity is no longer making any sense. He feels it's high time everyone joins the call because we will do better as separate um, entities and um, every part of the Nigerian uh, different ethnic uh, nationalities who will be known in different states will really do good. So there is no point, there is no gain trying to, you know, oppose anyone. And he acknowledged the fact that these Fulani terrorist groups are really terrorizing. So uh, it, it, it will be better all of us go and um, start our own states. And so nobody will terrorize each other like it has been for a while now. So uh, I think that's a very good call. Now we will um, progress. All right, Abiola children are coming out uh, they started this uh, journey since 2019 2020 until today they are really doing the work you know the Fulani is a very smart uh, group of people who are very few in number but very smart people when 
then they found out that um, they were on the, on the, they were alone. So they had to go to the people they can always get with a little thing, a little Greek gift. You have captured them. They go back to the tribe again. And this happened to be the same tribe where the same Fulani people conspired to use the military to uh, Bula the man, Abiola himself. And so his family have been convinced that uh, the same people who did the evil thing can be loved or can love them overnight. There is one of the storyline from the Abiola son. This one is not Jamu. This one now is the uh, Mumu. Yes, one of his son called Mumu. Mumu. Um, uh, Mumu, Mumu something, something Mumu Abiola. Yes, is it Abdul? Abdul, Abdul Mumu Abiola. That one. He he was trying to tell the story of how even Tinubu himself told him uh, Buari reminded him that he wasn't his uh, father when he was taking Buari to Baba uh, to Oba's palace. So, but the story we will not be taking that one to account today in this program because it's not really going to make up. Let's take the one from his brother Janu. Janu came on. He was interviewed by the press, and Jamie said 2019. That Nigerians should forget all these things, so that they should know. Uh, it's like the story of Pharaoh, that his father mean one and the same thing with a Buhari to Nigerians. So the same thing Buhari means to Nigerians is what his father means. That's in other words that his father would have done exactly the same thing or even worse than what Buhari did and you remember that his father was the one who enjoyed what, one of the most free uh, the freest and fairest election because he convinced Nigerian people to believe that he was coming to be a messiah and this was the same way even some Igbo ministers of the gospel, pastors, reverend fathers like A.G. Kembaka projected the same glory, the same way, in the same light that Buhari Abiola was projected as the Messiah coming. And he said that Nigerians should know that this is the same thing that his father would have delivered to Nigerian people. This Messiah, wonderful, fabulous, administrative and democratic dividend that his uh, father's uh, co-vision uh, 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 comrade Muhammad Buhari had just delivered. So this is what Abiola would have delivered. You know, had Buhari not come to show who he is, people would have said, whoa, this is the Messiah we never had. Messiah we never, the, the enemies never allow us to have. Oh, they would have blamed it on America, blamed it on UK, blamed it on one any country. They say, oh, it was UK. They see that this one would have not taken nonsense because he was an um, oppression sweep. He was the, the, the oppression in discipline, the fight against corruption. This is the kind of corruption that Bela would have uh, fought. And I know it will not escape your memory that even Fela, the prophet of music, Prophesied, he said, intervention at if if intervention at if if do 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 intervention at if if intervention at if if intervention at if if. Now this Abiola, the Tinubu, and the rest that he sang that song. So, what we are saying is that Nigerians were expecting, they are hoping. Nigerians are still hoping even to today that they are going to have a messiah. Now, these are the topmost messiahs that Nigerians had ever expected. And these are the outcome. This is who the best of Nigerian politicians are. The international thieves. These are the best of people they are. Uh, for me not to, I will talk, let me pause here so that you hear from 
Jamil Abiola, the son to uh, M.K. Abiola. Let's look at uh, what he has to say. And where I'm going with this is the president that we have now is a different kind of president. What makes him different? He's a different kind of president because he's a president that believes in democracy, he's a president that believes in the common man, he's a president that loves the common man. And when I see all this that is happening, I, it's my job to remind people about who they are talking about. About this man is Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu, a man who could have actually left the democratic struggle but stood to fight for it, risking his life, risking everything he had. So he's not like the other people that have come and have disappointed. That is why he needs to be given time. He has the credit. He has, it's like you in the United States, you know, you have a good credit rating. You can apply to get a loan because they will look at your credit record and they will give you, as opposed to someone that doesn't have a good credit record. So this man has become the president in just one year and two months he has been serving. And a lot of things he has done has been unprecedented. And, and when I so that is why when people are getting agitated, when it's I unprecedented, 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 yeah. unprecedented in the sense that if it's unprecedented, why are people on the streets? People are on the street because number one, it's like now this is channels. Do I work here? I don't. You work here, right? Let's assume that the owners of channels say, "I want Jamie Adela to become the managing director," and they put me to work here, and I come in here. And you tell me that this is how the books are and this is how things are. And I come here and I make promises to people based on what you've told me. And, I, and then I come, I find another thing entirely. And I'm trying to work it out. And it will take like almost two years for you to start seeing the results. Should I be blamed for what other management people did or not? Especially will you, will when you blame me? means that you ask for the job. You ask for the job. But the at the end of the day, the only, person, the, don't pity the only person... I will get it The done. only person... Yes, and that's why he has four years. The only person that knows everything is God. You know, he is the president of Nigeria. Since he has gotten there now, what has he been doing? I'll tell you some of the things he's been doing. Because people that are protesting, they have not, some of them have not really sat down to really think about what he has been doing. First of so all, those who are protesting are not being fair. No, they, are they, oh, are they no, fair no, to no, the no, president? No, they're emotional. But the, everybody can get emotional. And that's why I'm here. To also let them know some of the facts. And by the grace of God, when we now tell them some of the facts, a lot of them will say, oh, wow, how do you, you know, that's what I'm. That's where I'm going. First of all, we have a president that actually set up a fund to come and take care of people that are not. You finish. You have NYC. You haven't gotten a job. You know the federal government for the first time is going to be giving you an allowance every month. You get a job once you have your NYC. You know that is something that the president is going to do. And the other thing the president is going to do is that we have a program that we want to create three million jobs for people of high tech. 200,000 people already benefited. This is not something that is a pipeline, something that is already happening. Rome wasn't built in a day. That one is already there. Then the president as well, is they have like a subsidy removal loan scheme, which they've been giving out to a lot of families. 600,000 people have benefited 50,000. Of course, it's not enough, but it's a start. We have student loans. Whenever anybody tells the president that, oh, it could be done better, he is not proud. He will step down and he always do it. So when people are protesting against somebody that is already doing what they're supposed to do, then it's like as if you are, <laughs> it's like something, you want to break something that, you want to, you want to fix something that hasn't broken. It's already been broken before, but now he's working towards fixing it. The first book I wrote is called Realistic Hopes. I wrote that book 11 years ago. And the reason why I named it Realistic Hope is because I realized even back then that what actually makes people fail in life is that their hopes are never realistic. If you want to succeed, you have to have realistic hopes. This man came to a government that has been, well, we, so much has happened. Terrible things have happened in Nigeria. But it's the same government of APC. But well, when you say the same government of APC, government is government, you know. All of these conspiracies, you know, so that he wouldn't become president. So let us take a step back. One year and two months is not a long period of time. So we know that this president that you're looking at has a lot of wonderful plans for Nigeria. Look at this new Ministry of Livestock. Do you know what it's going to do? Do you know what the Livestock Ministry has done in Brazil? Do you know how that enough, that is enough to even transform Nigeria? The president is trying to like solve this, you know, cattle rearers, farmers problem that has been going on for a long time. Look at the issue of security. The president told the security agencies that all of you have to work together. And even recently, just three weeks ago, a whole family was kidnapped in Kaduna, but they all came together. And in less than a week, they freed the wife, they freed the children. So now the country is already going in the right path. 
apart. So when all of these things are happening, it's as if somebody is trying to bring God back. It's like the people of Israel, when the, the Jews left, and now somebody wants to take them back to Egypt. You know, this should not happen. Do you, know? do you think for a moment, maybe there are conspiracies against the president Tunubu? You know, the truth of the matter is that there were always fears from the beginning that if this protest starts, some people might hijack it. And some people, unfortunately, they haven't gotten over the fact that God did not destine that they will win last year's election. So at the end of the day, some of these people, I'm not, I'm not accusing him. I don't know him. I don't know what his mind is. Nobody has the right to accuse anybody. But there are some people who have a very, very sincere... The same people that worked against my dad and canceled his election, they, do you think that they want to want the person that was trying his best to support my dad to help him become president and to actually succeed? In the same forces that we have, but by the grace of God, I believe in God. And I believe that whatever it is that is happening, a lot of people will come to realize that this is wrong. This man has so many... I just mentioned some of the... So many things. I can talk about it all day. This is what we do in the office, you know. Even me on my own level, I've just signed an agreement with the NDLA. We've come up with Renewed Hope Resilience Initiative. What are we trying to do? We're trying to, like, take... We're starting with 50, you know, the former drug addicts that are rehabilitated by NDLA. We're going to rehabilitate them in the vocational training. We're going to help them, not just with the profession. We're going to also help them with training. We're going to help them to put them in the... We have so many plans in the food... In, the, in like, a, a supply chain... And we're going to make them, these are the same people that would have been drug addicts and gotten involved in banditry, gotten involved in kidnapping. This government has wonderful plans. So Nigerians shouldn't be deceived. So shouldn't be you're, you're asking Nigerians to give this government a chance. They should give the government a chance, you know. And, and the reason why they should have realistic hopes, they should know that this government came at a time. Even the election is enough to tell Nigerians everything. Your father, well, your father ran to be the president of this country. Yes, he did. In one of the elections uh, um, uh, regarded or tagged as one of the freest and fairest yes. in this country. Of course. Do you see Ebola Tinobu in an MK or Abiola for some reasons? Well, I'll tell you one thing, you know. At the end of the day, everybody is different, you know. But if you look at his own personal attitude, if you go to his house on a given day, he didn't even he was going to become president. You will see people lining up. The same way you see them lining up in my dad's house. A lot of people I meet up to today, they tell me stuff like, oh, your father did this for me. Your father did that for me. A lot of people I meet, they tell me that, oh, Senator Bala made Tinubu did this for me. He did that for me. I see these similarities in those areas. And of course, they were both accountants. But I also see a conspiracy as in like the same people that know my father to succeed. They also don't want him to succeed because of the fact that he supported my dad and he almost he almost lost everything. But I, that's my own personal opinion. I'm not forcing my opinion. And your father here. preached hope. And Bala Tunubutu is also preaching yeah, hope. Yeah, preaching hope. Because that's you. And even my book, I, the first book I wrote, I called it Realistic Hope. Hope is the only thing. Even Barack Obama, his book was Audacity of Hope, you know. Hope. Without hope, we cannot get anywhere. And there's no way we can keep having hope if we see people going But out. when the hope looks like a dashed one and people think that what they wanted, they are not getting it. You know, you don't think you know, that, no, that no, I'll tell you what's so funny, you know, when I was a kid, you know, there was a hospital near my house. When they take me there, whenever I have malaria, they're going to give me an injection, I'll just run away. And they'll drag me back, I'll run away again, then I'll finally hold me and they'll give me the injection. After two days, after the pain, I'll now be happy because I'll be playing around, I'll have recovered. So sometimes for you, things to get better, they have to get tough. You know, it's a test and it's from God. But you see, God is testing people, you know, and it's not just in Nigeria. So God, in America, there's, a, there's a hand of God in all of this. There's a hand of God in everything. In even the, in the United States. Okay, Nigerian people, una, don't hear una, man. This is MKO Abiola, the most, the most hallowed, the Messiah that never came. The Messiah that Nigerians missed. Oh, what a wonderful man. It would have been the best president in the whole wide universe. This is the best president. This is his vision. This is his very learned son talking. This is the vision of my father. He said that my father shared the same vision with uh, Buhari, shared the same vision with uh, Tinubu. This is how we have delivered. The same Renew Hope. The same book that he wrote. The same book that Obama wrote. The same agenda, vision of his father, Renewed Hope. The same Renewed Hope of Tinubu. Say this hope, 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 hope. Say exactly the same thing that his father would have delivered. Nigerian people will not say there is no hope in this Nigeria. One Nigeria, lie lie to lie lie. This man is telling you here, in his consciousness, he's not drunk, that this is exact vision of his father. 
they share everything. In fact, the same way people were coming to his father's house, the same way they were coming to Tinubu's house. In fact, he said the way the reason you people are having this protest is that those people that obstructed his father said all of them are still living today. That they are the same people that want to disrupt uh, Tinubu's government. And the she will ask him, he said, uh, that one year, two months is not enough for anything. And the person he's delivering gave the kind of the manifesto of Abiola, who was even so proud to say he don't even need he was to win the election. Now, the same hope he gave, that is the same hope Abiola gave. And he said, he was going to hit the ground running from the day one. That exact things Abiola said. And from that very day one, Tinubu hit, hit the ground running. Everybody is still on the run today in Nigeria. In this country, everybody is still running. Everybody is on the run. Some people are even following the Mediterranean Sea, trying to. That's why you see the sea has trapped a lot of Nigerian people there on the road. Because Tinubu hit the ground running, and everybody is running. That was the same way Abiola was going to hit the ground running. The guy went ahead to say that. Most other leaders before Tinubu and Buhari, they would have messed Nigeria up, you know, because of that, nobody wants to believe in Tinubu again. They should give, and she would say, So, how long do you want us to give him to perform? <laughs> and he said, They should give, and that's why he had four years. So, four years is hitting the ground running. Let me even ask. So, four years he will still be doing trial and error method. Mm. So this is what uh, Babiola had for Nigerian people. Now, you know, one Nigerian people will not get, will not get, will not get any hope. Oh. Uh -huh. Look at what he said. You know, the side that I am even coming to pick is where he now said the two programs, in fact, he gave a lot of programs, and to worsen it, he even insisted that these programs have get, it's not as if that the programs are under incubation. It's not under incubation. He has already hit the program running. The program as we speak is ongoing currently. In fact, Nigerian NYC core members, so far you have gone for coming uh, to serve. Now you are on salary. You are on some uh, allowance. All, all Nigerians. All Nigerian. So now, <laughs> The other one he said is now to 50,000 people. Now also that they have now started rehabilitating people who have been affected by hard drugs. Wonderful. And um, the hard drugs, you know, about four months ago, the then Senate whip uh, from the uh, uh, Bono State, uh, uh, this man that he sleeps like, the, uh, he sleeps people, um, that was uh, disposed from uh, his office as a Senate, Senate whip, um, Ali Dumen. <laughs> no, he sleeps, he's always like on him. Then, these are the people that are always talking about the effect of a uh, And unfortunately, it is a government of drug lords. But let's not even deviate, distract ourselves with that side. But Senator Kaikon on Renji. Now, he is talking about this as one of their programs. Wonderful. I'm not even going there. Now, the worst of it all is that he said that one of the finest of the policies, just like it has, which has worked fabulously well in Brazil, is the policy of anti, uh, sorry, uh, apportioning, uh, 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 sorry, stand, uh, instituting a ministry of livestock. Instituting a ministry of livestock. I want to go to that, his ministry of livestock. But before I go there, because that will really take us. In fact, it's going to take over this uh, class, uh, this of uh, this uh, uh, exposition class, so to say. So now, let's listen to him summarize this very nonsense. Or oh, I don't need to waste time with him again because he doesn't have anything to say other than to tell you that Tinubu and Buhari share the same vision with each other. Let me even anchor on that. Let's see the opinion of some of Nigerian learned, some scholars responding to him to even remind us. Let's go there. Well, I, ordinarily, I would have just gone straight to answer your question, but 
Uh, I would like to respond to a few things Mr. Jamia Abula has said. And to remind Nigerians that in 2019, uh, Mr. Jamia Abula told Nigerians that the then Buari uh, represented the vision of his father and in fact told Nigerians to vote, he told Nigerians in 20, 20, 2019 to vote for Buari to honor his father. In 2020, you can fact check me on this, Jamia Abula, who is president in Tinubu today, told Nigerians that Buhari had the same vision with his father. When Buhari left in 2023, thousands of Nigerians were slaughtered. The economy was nothing to write home about. The so-called war, war against corruption was a complete flock. The entire country was in ruins. Tunubu came in, and even Tunubu has said that he made Nigeria destroyed. At least people loyal to him are saying so. So I begin to wonder whether Buhari's legacy represent the vision of Abiola for Nigeria. I think that is the question Mr. Jamil and his family should think about because when he's speaking in this manner, it is a discretion of the name of his father. And I'm saying that because I'm very upset about some of the things he has said. All right, you have heard that very straightforward, clear and the claim in a very simple English from our very learned young scholar, a legal luminary, from Akwaibom, my state. Yes, the former state called Akwaibom, now in a different name in Biafran land, Biafran new state. So now, you heard the scholar here, just, he is that, just almost to um, delay for to me in class. He said it very straight. This Abiola family came forth in 2015 and told Nigerian people, if you said you voted my father, you love my father, the achievement, the dream of my father is here, housed in this one man called Muhammad Buhari. So this man is, he harbors that same dream of my father. Now some people thought it was a mistake after the first tenure of Tinubu Buhari, he said, no, this man is a bundle of everything my father wanted to do for Nigerian people. 2015 came, gone. 2019 was the, the, the next election to continue. And he came forth again to tell Nigerians, I told you earlier on that this man is doing it. Please. The whole vision you would never got that my father all had. In fact, I am with the template of my father. But see the man that is exact with the fact, a carbon copy of my father's template. And um, Nigerian people who now understood themselves never voted. The election was rigged the way it was rigged. And this man had his way back. This guy, all related, was still supporting the same government. Now, to tell you that at the end, according to Nebian, not according to him, just I want to go by his words, but what is known to every Nigerian, thousands of Nigerians, almost in hundred, were lost. Because somebody sustained the dream of MKU Abiola. The sustenance of MKU Abiola's dream, that is, the, the gift that Abiola would have given to Nigerians, his carbon copy represented the gift from another flesh. That is to say, a man who has that same gift, just like MP Abiola, came forth with it and the Abiola family now supported him to deliver the good gift to the Nigerian people. And that is the result you saw. That the government of Nigeria under Muhammad Buhari throughout, in fact, you remember that the professor who was the vice president of Yemi Usibanjo was always going for funeral service, mass burial. Mass burial on Monday, mass burial on Tuesday, mass burial on. Even during Yuletide, during celebration, festive seasons, they are going for mass burial. That is the package MT Abiola had for you people. And you think any other person have anything different? No. You Nigerian, Nigerian people must wake up to face the reality of change. The only change that will do you good is a change 
that will stop foreign interference by the way of you taking responsibility and being in charge of managing your day-to-day -day life, which is the dissolution of this state that has failed Nigerian people. Then we will remain Nigerian people. We will remain the people we are, but not as Nigerians, as Gafrans, as Oduans, as Ariwas, as every other group that want to carve out. You two, please, we are not instigating anything. Rather, we are preferring solution that will give us a better living standard, a way forward to life, where there will be absolute peace and tranquility amongst humanity that exists within this part of the world. That's what in he came forth. My only point of disappointment or sorry disagreement with a, a barrister in here is where he puts them at the end of his uh, uh, comments or observation. You know, he said that he gave a, a, a note of disappointment, adding that uh, Abula's son, you know, owes apology to his father, that it, it was desecration of his father. You know, coming that is the only point I came to disagree with uh, in a bit. And my brother and a very learned scholar, young scholar, that matter, uh, Barrister in Yebet, you got it wrong at this point. How? Because you assume from the campaign of MK Abiola that he was going to do something so wonderful. You forgot that Tinubu, sorry, Buhari gave the same wonderful manifesto he was going to bring heaven on earth and bring in this uh, uh, fight against indiscipline and today in the world book of record the most corrupt government that ever lives is these two governments not just in nigeria the most corrupt it is indeed in, in a government where you hear the snake swallows federal government money where you hear monkeys and baboons go to federal government offices. In a government where you know, you hear that after a lot of looting have taken place and there is an investigative uh, panel instituted, a group of criminals will be mobilized to go and burn government offices and documents so that auditing will be difficult or impossible. It is only the government where there is no kind of thing that no one ever... It was the government that even civil servants were even taking their own lives by the way of committing suicide. You remember the one in the, in the middle belt, around 20, the first the administration of the Muhammad Bukhari. It was the government where, there, in fact, there is no kind of story you did not hear. Today, again, those stories are A man who said that a poor man should sacrifice, that is terrible, that Abiola family is glorifying, is the man that has gone to acquire private jet 100 billion 100 million us dollars which is enough money to start a lot of things that would have taken a lot of people out of the streets hunger hungry and he didn't want to stop there he went as far as to fortify it with another 50 million us dollars people were hungry people are hungry people were even planning for protest it wasn't his business. The government where ghost workers are bigger than the actual workers. You don't know about that? And Jonathan even came to stop that and they now they to do it. You know why? Because they coerced Nigeria into accepting Mumu. Mumu, Mumuism. And you remember one of Abiola's son is Mumu. Now they now have to enforce a Mumu system. Muslim Muslim. Mumu system, they him first. So no one can talk. I am coming to that bottom part, which is the creation of the livestock ministry. I know a lot of you don't know why. I did a video before, I wasn't very really elaborate. I just uh, uh, bothered it around a particular man's video. One man who was very angry about the development called on people that this is an attempt to bring in or uh, to bring back the a Ruga that was rejected. Yes, that was a very valid point. But this time I want to go beyond that. 
So he does need to follow me. I will still have to come and, um, you know, maybe throw some finishing touches on this um, part, on the failure of the uh, the, the government of uh, APC. Not just, so now some people will think it's just about APC. No! The Messiah Labour Party you are talking about, was it not it's the same Labour Party that we have? The Labour Party representatives, the senators and the House of Representatives, they who were going for solve utility and the, the, the government where you have the biggest lies of all time that Nigerian senators are earning one point something million naira. Where even senators themselves say, oh, blood of something. Because they don't want to call blood of God this time. They say blood of something. There's something more be fundamentally wrong with this kind of government and this country. How me that I am a senator that I'm benefiting? You, are you making excuses for me? The, the, the senators are earning more than 30 million naira. We university professors who should be the beacons of knowledge are the ones who cannot go home with up to 470,000 naira at the end of the month. When you pick up your calculator to check the equivalent of 450,000 naira, you will go home and be weeping. You go home and weep for these people. 450,000 naira. What are you going to do with that shit, man? 450,000 naira. Professor. With family. And some group of illiterates. They live in luxury on the taxpayers' money. Isn't that annoying? But it's, 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 it's a thing that is never going to stop unless you decide to stop the error by calling for new states to emerge and end this one that was never created by our people. Now look at it again. One of the biggest achievements of the uh, Tinubu led administration of the Mumu, of the Mumu. Tinubu led administration of Mumuism. This is the biggest of achievements. Creation of livestock ministry. Livestock ministry. They created livestock ministry. Was that intended to, was that in the interest of Nigerian people? So you run a, you really run a aristocratic kleptomaniac government like the then Senate Whip, Ali Dume said. Oh, thank you for proving Ali Dume right. The Senate, the Buhari Tinubu led government have proven Ali Dume right. They run a aristocratic. You were going into such a sensitive. A, 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 a measure or should you say creation without consulting the Nigerian people this is a same bill that was rejected in fact most southern Nigeria and middle bed government assemblies passed a bill forbidding this bill that the federal government is introducing in another name they passed a bill even the most foolish of those governors, including the man that is always burning in the United States, even had the courage to allow his assembly to pass the bill. The most mugurous human being that ever handled such a sensitive office, very mugurous buffoon that is always burning in the he was courageous enough for the first time to stand with his colleagues that this particular being no, because it has taken lives, too much lives. And this is what the Mumu government is bringing forth again. They have brought it back already. He's telling you of what they have already achieved. Then for you to understand why we did the yesterday video, why the state deserves to be called a terrorist state, look at the reason and see why we cry and why nothing under the sun will make us remain in this kind of failure oh no god damn it it's not gonna happen man. check it out we are talking about a government that is so deaf and unconcerned about what people feels 
a state that is so wrongly managed we will let us um, see who inspired who initiated who supported who encouraged and who is sustaining the ministry of livestock and to whose interest is it serving whose interest is it serving so we are going to take it now follow us as we read according to nigerian dailies so thank you while we read listen up okay we are starting with uh which national newspaper we are starting with a uh, radio nigeria.org meet the six creation of livestock ministry frocn headquarter headquarter the national president meet the cattle breeders association of nigeria macbn baba osman ngazama has advocated the creation of a ministry of livestock by the federal government to generate more revenue and add to the country's gross domestic product gdp 24th june 2024 now the Allah is the one that tells government of nigeria what to do and this is one of the justifications as to why some or a lot of nigerians and different sections and all those different ethnic ethnic groups that want to carve out these are one of the things they are referencing to and why the northern elders forum are seeking to you know sue some people to uh icc which um a lot of this our well-meaning uh freedom fighters welcome that development but today the northern elders forum maybe the same way uh, the same way yakubu gowon was talked out of um adhering to the aburi accord uh, some of their little queasy learned brothers maybe have uh, done some interpretation of that action as they planned so let us continue to read now we go to daily trust yes www.dailytrust.com meti allah demands creation of livestock ministry on 7th september 2021 but this was not carried out because the Buhari government had a lot of oppositions to that it was still fresh in the mind of a lot of people as different states already created an anti grazing laws as the bills were passed across different uh, state assemblies so on 7th september 2021 he argued the federal government to take an inventory of all the existing grazing reserves traditional grazing areas and major stock routes that was the Mieti Allah leader recommending to Nigerian government in 2021 now on the channel's television on 10th July 2024 had to uh, conduct a program on this our hope is renewed Mieti Allah loud Tinubu for creating livestock ministry their hope of continuing their agenda they now want to continue the agenda maybe today from now onwards you will begin to now hear <laughs> hear about what they were doing very well during the buari led administration where they were you know constituting terror across states of the federation so now this is from channels television let us see again Mieti Allah demands creation of livestock ministry 
The association said this was in line with the recommendation of the Interministerial Committee. This is September 2021 by Abbas Jimu. This was written by Abbas Jimu. We're not going into the details, just to give you the headline so that you know exactly who inspired, who initiated, who came forth with the idea of the livestock upon the former name they used, Ruga. Upon the failure of the former name they used, Ruga. Now they now came back, re-strategized. They went back, re-strategized and then launched again using another tactics. Now the Mieti Allah Kautal Hore, a foreign and social cultural association, Monday urged the federal government to create a ministry of livestock and finish and uh, fisheries as obtainable in many African countries. No more Brazil this time. The association said this was in line with the recommendation of the Inter-Ministerial Committee on Livestock Development in Nigeria 2015. The report of the President Committee on Pastoralists and Insecurity 2014 and the National Livestock Transformation Program. Make the alarm now. They don't go to school. They are the one remaining government. What the agreement was with uh, Buari and the Buari did not uh, fail to keep to this. And because of that, they have been reacting. So, in, so its national president, Abdullahi Belu Bodeju, and the national secretary, Sali Al Hassan, made the call uh, uh, as a national peace summit and the invest. Investiture of Queen Mother Amina Temitope Ajayi as the Mieti Allah brand ambassador held at the, Mie at the Malia Market headquarters of the association in Karu, Karu local government area of Nasarawa State. The association also urged the National Assembly to intervene and stop the state governors from enacting the anti-open grace law but they already did enact it so what are you talking about here is it re-enacting it's okay you know better what you want to say now it says the anti-open grazing law would in undermine the relative peace and stability currently enjoyed in local communities threatened social order and the worsen cattle rustling in the country it, what they mean here is that that it is it will be in the interest of all the nigerian states to accept to go and reverse the anti-open grazing law so that they will have their security assured so without this happening they, they they are not sure they can guarantee their security their safety in their own state so especially in these localities in of all states the local areas in different states of nigeria so it will be in the interest of the state assemblies state governors and governments to reverse their anti-open grave laws so that they will be safe wherever they are otherwise if it be for them okay now the 70 the 70 southern state governors had passed a resolution to enact the anti-open grazing law. Let us read from Punch newspaper. Punch newspaper, 23rd July 2024. It says, The Mieti Ala Kautal Hore has held the President Bola Tinubu administration for creating the Ministry of Livestock Development. That's a very wonderful development from him. Now going to Vanguard on the 24th July 2024, Mieti Allah throws weight behind creation of Ministry of Livestock. The Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Mark Ban Sunday threw weight behind creation of the Ministry of Livestock by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Going to Daily Post, 
We want Ministry of Livestock Development, Mieti Allah. We want Ministry of Livestock Development, Mieti Allah demands or make their ground known that this is what they want and the government of Nigeria must deliver it to them. On 23rd July 2024, he said that a Ministry of Livestock and Fishery Development should be created instead of the entire livestock value chain issues and so on. Let us read again. Or oh, are we? It's all right. Let's not bother much on this uh, Ministry of Livestock reading again because there are lots, so lots, very much materials available to read on the livestock, the concoction, how it was cooked up, and how also Nigerian people captured the joke. Thank you. Let us uh, go to the the uh, barristers part a little bit and the okay now you have seen yourself how everything went this is why you are having that bill you are having you are calling me of livestock which abiola son said it's in the interest in fact is one of is the biggest achievement of the uh bullet syllables uh, of course it should be that was why you had the mumu government in place the mumu government in place the mumu government yes that's why you had the mumu government look at it why you have the mumu government that is it the Mieti Allah, the terrorist organization that is in charge of Nigerian state. Mieti Allah, the terrorist organization that is in charge of Nigerian state. The way, the same way Taliban are in charge of Afghanistan, that the same way Taliban of Nigeria, the Mieti Allah, are in charge. They initiated the bill of the open grazing law that was a bill was already passed against it across states of the federation now the government in the advice of this Mieti Allah brought back this bill with another name and today you suddenly have started hearing about pie 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 across different states especially now from the north middle belt they have now shifted to to come to South is using Enugu, if not that the Biafran leader did not allow them to have see any breathing space. If not that Simon Epa, the Prime Minister, Biafran Republic government in exile, sent the Biafran army to go there and flush them. That would have been the story. What is happening in Middle Belt last month? Some middle belt uh, persons were coming out to cry, begging their people, why would they go to embrace Simon Epa? Or let there be a man who will be as bold as Simon Epa and Nandekano to help them protect their place. Since there is this cry, was that not enough ground for Nigerian people to understand the imminent need to kewala this Ubudu, to break? So that people will have their peace. This is this is it. So for some of you who were thinking, who are still thinking that you are going to have another Messiah, another MKB Messiah that you never had come in another flesh, one miraculous human being. Forget about it, it's not going to work. Forget, just forget it. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Eh? Let us now go to uh, Enyebiet. What Enyebiet had to say. Again. Let's, in, fact, in fact, let us go to the whole issue of M.K. Abiola's uh, children or uh, son, Jamil. Let's, let's reflect back on that.
Okay, now um, you have seen yourself how everything went. This is why you are having that bill, you are having, you are calling me of life talk, which Abiola's son said it's in the interest, in fact, it's one of, is the biggest achievement of the uh, Bola Tinobu's, uh, of course it should be. That was why you had the Mumu government in place. The Mumu government in place. The Mumu government. Yes, that's why you had the Mumu government. Look at it. Why you have the Mumu government? That is it. The Mieti Allah, the terrorist organization that is in charge of Nigerian state. Mieti Allah, the terrorist organization that is in charge of Nigerian state. The way, the same way Taliban are in charge of Afghanistan. That's the same way Taliban of Nigeria, the Mieti Allah, are in charge. They initiated the bill of the open grazing law that was a bill was already passed against it across states of the Federation. Now, the government, in the advice of this Mieti Allah, brought back this bill with another name. And today, you suddenly have started hearing about pay 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 across different states, especially now from the north middle belt. They have now shifted to to come to southeast using Enugu. If not, that the Biafran leader did not allow them to have see any breathing space. If not, that Simon Epa, the Prime Minister, Biafran Republic government in exile, sent the Biafran army to go there and flush them. That would have been the story. What is happening in Middle Belt? Last month, some Middle Belt uh, persons were coming out to cry, begging their people, why would they go to embrace Simon Epa? Or let there be a man who will be as bold as Simon Epa and Mandekano to help them protect their place. Since there is this cry, was that not enough ground for Nigerian people to understand the imminent need to kewala this ubudu, to break, so that people will have their peace. This is this is it. So for some of you who were thinking, who are still thinking that you are going to have another Messiah, another MKR builder Messiah that you never had come in another flesh. One miraculous human being. Forget about it. It's not going to work. Forget. Just forget it. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Eh? Let us now go to uh, a Nebiet. What a Nebiet had to say. Again. Let's, in fact, in fact, let us go to the whole issue of MK Abiola's uh, children of the uh, son, Jamil. Let's, let's reflect back on that. Now, according to uh, MK Abiola's son, Jamil Abiola, 11th May 2019, Abiola, my father's vision, my father's vision for Nigeria was masses oriented. He was more interested in taking care of the masses because he believes that the masses owns power and this is exactly the same way uh, Buhari is doing. Daily Trust. Now from Facebook source some four years ago, Fulani News Media, Democracy Day, Buhari has same agenda as my father. Democracy Day, Buhari has same agenda as my father, Jamil Abiola's son. My father and this president primarily have the same objective. Listen, I am sure you are not attentive. MK Abiola's son said, I have my father's blueprint on what he wanted to do for Nigerian people and how he had always wanted the same Muslim Muslim uh, government and as the ticket were. That's 
I'm quoting him verbatim and illiterating here now. My father and this president, president, president primarily have the same objective. I am leaving it there. I am going over to Vanguard News, 12th June 2020. Now we have left 2021. Buhari has the same agenda as my father, Jamil Abiola's son. 12th June. My father and this present president primarily have the same objective. They both aim to take life easier for the masses. Maybe my father might have let us stop reading here. So his father, MKO Abiola, the Messiah, the Nigerian people say they never had. Now they are having it. So that they know what Messiah means in Nigerian system. When you hear about a Messiah, my dear brothers and sisters, just prepare for doom. When you hear a Messiah coming, go and prepare for doom. If you don't have shovel, go and buy some shovel and spades or digger. Use it to dig some shallow graves because there is going to be a weekly mass burial. That is the government you never had, but you are having today, one Nigeria. Let us go to uh, Vanguard, 12 June again, 22 Now Vanguard officially, yes, that's, I did not give it fully here. Buari has the same agenda as my father, Jamu Abiola's son, written by Jamu, uh, by Olayinka Ajayi, written by Olayinka Ajayi. So, uh, now when you heard me, you heard me say something, I made some remark on Enyebet's assertion. Now, Enyebet said in Channel's television um, some three weeks ago, he said, your, you desecrate your father's name. He was challenging Abiola's son. You discredit your father's name. That was when I, I had to reply uh, in Ibit when I said a, a, a couple of minutes, uh, some minutes ago. I told him, in Ibit, my brother, this is the only place you made a little error or blunder to say because this guy did not disagree his father. This guy is telling you the truth. This is the same way his father wanted to do for Nigerian people. That this is the only mosaic thing you can hear from Nigeria. Even now you are calling or cheering P2B up. If P2B had him, because you have not heard P2B perform now as president, governorship and presidency is not the same. What Tinubu is doing in Nigeria as a president is not what he did as a governor. Yes, as a governor, he was totally in charge. There were no much... <coughs> There were no much insecurity as it is today. There were no much uh, outbreak of corruption. I think then in his government it was just him, you know, corrupt. Today, the spread of corruption in his government, under his watch, is too much. The extravagance of administration is too much. So you can see that what you were thinking you don't use the little governorship without much headache to compare to the whole no it is a place where you come you see a cabal who are so poised on ensuring that you never perform now look at it so um brother Enidiet, um don't be disappointed the abiola son is telling you what his father wanted to uh, you are not the one you don't have the father's blueprint he has it his father wanted the it is a mumu ticket mumu, you know mumu, mumu, mumu ticket yes this is mumu ticket it is mumu ticket so don't be disappointed when you have that mumu ticket M U M U ticket that's the worst of it all. That's when you get to the peak of it. 
That's where you get to the peak of it. And these people don't give a damn. Cry them a bucket of blood, a, a bucket of tears. It's not, they don't care. They don't bloody care. Uh, please, YouTube, I'm putting up a disclaimer here. Nothing violent here, no disinformation here. We are doing a very good work that you YouTube should encourage us to do more. We are working for the safety and the good well-being of humanity the same way you, YouTube, will do. So please, don't do that your Uno Austric, you know, uh, prognosis. Please, spare us. We are not doing anything that is not good. Please, thank you. I am very sure you understand. Thank you. We must continue. So, the good people, the good indigenous people of Nigeria who have been coerced into this uh, arrangement that is long overdue for a resolving and dissolving. Uh, I urge you to be courageous to join us in this call for a better life for all people in this arrangement who would be very better you know having their separate uh, government and statehood i want you to join us call for this Okay, Yamaru Noma, Ibomo Gamozo, all my people, my fellow dear friends, lovers of freedom, I greet you. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your time today. Akpana Akpana Football sincerely wish you well and um, encourages you to um, do good to contribute your quota at any time and in any measure you can. We also need information. We uh, There is a brother that gave us this platform. Now he has a new. Uh, platform where uh, he do other uh, progressive programs that are not necessarily about Biafra too. So please, I encourage all my followers to also follow him. That is Blunt and Factual. Blunt, B-L-U-N-T, Blunt, space, then Factual, F-A-C-T-U-A-L, Factual, Blunt and Factual. So follow him there. You are encouraging me to just subscribe to that station too. Uh, sometimes our activities also will be played there. You're welcome. Thank you. Have your have a nice day. Have a good night and um, have a good day. Uh, according to your time zone and according to the time you are watching. You're welcome. Bye.